Hey guys, it's Michelle here again with another episode of My Cup of America. And today I am so excited to bring you Angie Ringler with Waste Free Products. Right here from Central Florida. I mean, we're practically neighbors <laughs> in the next town over. So um, Angie, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to chat with us today and to explain to all of our listeners and viewers exactly what it is you do. So with that being said... Tell me a little bit, what is it that you do? What are your products all about? Well, really my products are all about eliminating the plastic waste that comes from our traditional products like laundry soap and shampoo bars and conditioner and stain remover, you know, hand soap. You think how many times you buy a hand soap pumper, yeah. right? And we just discard that plastic. Those things are really meant to be used hundreds of times. So um, just to give you a quick background, the whole reason I started my company, which is Tangi, uh, that's a combination of my dad's name, Terry, and my name, Angie, and oh, he's nice. no longer with us. So I thought it'd be a nice little, you know, way to honor my yeah. dad, who taught me a lot about reuse and sustainability. And, um, but I go by Waste Free Products, and the website is wastefreeproducts.com, which really um, hones in on what we're doing, right? Providing these waste free options. And it all started from my own skin irritations that I had. And I eventually started to realize that I thought it was my laundry soap. Oh. So I started tinkering away and I figured out maybe if I'm washing my clothes in these chemicals and then I'm wearing them, that they could be getting into my skin. And that's what's causing me some of these skin irritations. So it really started with the laundry soap. Um, of course, now I've branched out to all sorts of other products, but that was really, um, you know, the, my phoenix that rose from the ashes, yeah. as I like to say, because I, I feel like that's something that we use a lot of every day and we don't even think about it. Oh, We're just certainly. so used to filling up a cap of soap, pouring it in the washing machine and go about our day. Yeah. So I started making these products, sold them in plastic bottles, just like most other companies out there. When you go on the cleaning aisle, right? Yeah. What do you see? Rows and rows of plastic bottles. Yep. Yeah. And a few years in, I began to really question where all those bottles were going. So I said to myself one day, if I can't get away from pushing this plastic, because natural ingredients aren't good enough, right? If I'm still pushing these plastic bottles, I must still be part of the problem. Right. So I started really looking for ways to... Um, how to sell a liquid without a plastic bottle. I didn't know how to do that. I'm not like a chemist by trade or anything. <laughs> and I spent a few years, actually, a lot of time and a lot of money reformulating my liquid products into a paste form that people could dissolve at home. That you could take like a paste. Matter of fact, I should have grabbed one before I got on camera. I could have showed it to you. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't like being well prepared oh, okay. um but the idea is that this paste is is about is the standard size of a bar of soap it's like the size of a deck of cards you drop that into a gallon of water and it makes a gallon of liquid laundry soap liquid hand soap that's the idea is that you can then use that liquid and refill your own bottles so that's really the gist of what tangy does through waste-free products so somebody they would they would buy one of your products. Let's say it's the the laundry paste, and like you said, about the size of a deck of cards, and then yep. they have their own bottle that they yep. can just reuse. So it's just one over and over and over, over and over again. So like you know those great foaming hand soap pumpers, yeah, you know that make that luxurious nice yeah. foam. So you could keep refilling those things and keep reusing those pumpers over and over again. Yeah. Same with your laundry bottle. I mean, if you had a nice Look, those laundry bottles that they make are sturdy and strong, yeah. and they've spent a lot of years developing them. They've, some of them even got the little push dispensers on the yeah. front. You could refill that forever. I mean, that thing's never going to break down. Yeah, you know, I see sometimes, um, like, looking around on Pinterest and stuff, people have even got those glass um, drink dispensers that they're using yeah. for their laundry soap yeah. and stuff. And they look so perfect. pretty, don't they? Yeah. Because you can see the soap in there. Yes. Yeah. That same concept. Yeah. My problem would be my dumb cat would get up on the shelf and <laughs> not get over. <laughs> so what, what I do personally is we have a big, I've had this Rubbermaid container and I know it's plastic. Don't holler at me <laughs> folks. 
but I've had this Rubbermaid container forever and it's a gallon size. And I just drop a bar in there, fill it up with water. And then I pour that into a smaller, it's actually an old um, vegan A's jar, an old, you know, vegan oh, mayonnaise yeah. jar, because that's easy for me to hold right. and dispense a little bit of liquid from, as opposed to trying to finagle like a big jar. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think like you said, you know, we kind of, we kind of forget on how much waste that each person puts out. And I know there's a statistic out there of how much waste someone puts out, an average person per year. I'm sure it's several pounds of, of it, it, trash. I don't know what the number is offhand, but it is astronomical. Matter of fact, they do like, I, I'm, you know, on Instagram, you'll see things like Plastic Free July and Futuristic February, where people are actually encouraged to keep their waste for a week. Yeah. Now, I know it's hard and it sucks to keep all that trash around, but that's the idea is to give you a visual yeah. of all that you're accumulating that you don't even think about. Because we've been trained to believe that the more we're recycling, the better we're doing. Right. But as they're finding out, recycling is not the answer. A lot of that so stuff does things. not get recycled. Exactly. And recyclers are not incentivized to recycle most of the plastic. They're only really incentivized to recycle cardboard and aluminum. Yeah. I know like my husband and I, like, you know, we try to recycle as much as we can and I'm putting stuff that I feel is recyclable in the bin. He's like, no, you can't do it. Like, like styrofoam, you know, the, like this, the styrofoam, you know, um, like the trays or trays or anything like that. You know, you would think that those would be recyclable, but they're not, you know? So no. it's like, then what's the purpose? I mean, it's kind of, you know, right. kind of back and, and then when we put and... stuff in the recycling bin that can't be recycled, if it contaminates something else, because everything is hand sorted. Yeah. So if they can't do anything with it, they simply take your whole recycling bin and they dump it in the trash. Yeah. And that's not, that's not the, that's not what we were going for. Right. So it kind of defeats our purpose. Yeah. It totally defeats the purpose. Totally. Yeah. So Angie, tell me how, how long have you been in business? I established the company in 2012 okay. and didn't know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> I had always worked in corporate. I came from like a legal background okay. and I didn't know what I was doing. So I spent the first few years just stumbling and bumbling around. And then I started selling, like I said, in plastic bottles, not really in alignment with who I was on the inside. So I would say in the past five years, it has taken a different trajectory because now I'm in alignment with who I am every day. Right. I'm a green girl at heart. And mm -hmm. so having my business in alignment with myself has made everything go smoother. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think anybody who's starting a business, you know, there's bumps and bruises. I mean, it's going to yeah. it's going to happen. Anybody who thinks there's such as an overnight success. Yeah, yeah, they may have been an overnight success, but you don't see the 10 years prior that they stumbled right. and fell on their face, you know, so right. it's, it's all part of being an entrepreneur and you know, that there is no textbook for it. I mean, everything is different. Every business is different. Every circumstance is different, you know, and it's a lot of personal, yeah. personal growth and things and, and you've really got to have, oh, you know, big time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of it. So Angie, who, would you, who would you say is your ideal customer? Well, I'd like to believe that it's somebody who wants to make a better change, who wants to do better for the next generations. But honestly, my ideal client is somebody who is looking to live the zero waste lifestyle or who's looking right now to reduce waste in their life. Right. I think of it in terms of we need to be doing to this planet what we expect for the next generations. Right. But you know, we're in an instant gratification society. So we can't, I can't expect people to be thinking that far ahead. Right. And, you know, you think of things, you know, just the way things have changed just over the last, you know, 12 months, you know, if things would have been able to be planned out more, yeah. you know, and, and, and just, you know, like I've talked to other, other business owners too, there's so many things that aren't passed on anymore. There's so many younger people that they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to cook for their family. They rely on going out to eat. Well, then you have all the restaurants shut down. Well, then, oh crap, what are we gonna do? You know, they, they yeah, that's don't- that's become know, the norm. Yeah, they don't right. know how to do that. They don't know how to grow a garden. You know, growing up, my brother had 
I bet you it was probably a half an acre that was complete garden. I mean, he had corn and tomatoes and squash. I mean, you name it. He had it. And he would go out there, and everything was just so detailed out. There was never a weed in this garden. You know, but, I mean, he, mom canned for days, weeks. All this and it become a form of exercise. I mean, you yeah. think about, um, you know, our new leisure time is sitting. So we used to work all day sitting and then our leisure time was more active, but now leisure time has become our screen time, you know, phone time. It's really affecting those different areas that we pretty much want to ignore that. We don't want to, you know, believe that we're affecting our health and our lifestyle by the actions that we're taking or the inactions that we're taking oh, yeah. every day. Yeah. We, like when we said, look we're, even beyond how we're treating the planet, right? It's really about what we're doing every day. Oh yeah. Like not you doing. said, we want instant gratification. You know, it's kind of like, yeah. you know, to lose weight. I want to see instant, you know, if this weight came out overnight, why can't it go off overnight? You know, and to, <laughs> to have the sustainability to, you know, okay, it's, it's a pattern change. It's doing this, that, and the other thing, you know, yeah. it's, it's just people changing, changing their mindset. And, you know, we've got to, you know, it's not so much, all right, now i got to run into Target to get laundry soap. Well, now I can drive up to Target and get laundry soap, you know. but I don't even have to walk anymore in the store. Yeah. I, you know, I can't tell you the last time I've been in Target. You know, I just, just, just drive up and, and go. So, Angie, what would you say is probably your three best-selling products? Definitely the laundry soap, the hand soap paste, and the shampoo bars. Okay. I think because those are easy swaps to make, you know, we all use those products a lot. Right. Think about how many shampoo bottles you probably bought in the last six months. Oh, I can't even, I can't even begin to think about it. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> if you could see my shower with all the shampoo bottles in there, you would like, ah! <laughs> oh, we got to work on you, Michelle. We got to get you switched on that. I know, right? <laughs> but the idea is that, you know, shampoo is kind of an easy, even though, so are you are you brand are you like a brand girl like you find a brand and you stick with it or are you like yeah, just trying different of, stuff? Um, I mean, speaking of like shampoo, my hair is just so unmanageable that it takes me a long time to find something that I really like. And so when I do find it, then I pretty much stick with that brand with it. So okay. yeah, well, your hair looks great. I wouldn't call it unmanageable at all. It looks really it's good because the products I'm using. <laughs> it's, all those <laughs> bottles, it's all those bottles in my, in my shower. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, uh, so, you know, going back to, I'm um, talking about the products, you know, so you picked your three favorite, but what other products do you have? I mean, I, looking on your website, you've got a whole catalog of products. Well, definitely, you know, the pet shampoo bar is really popular. The shave cream soap bar is really popular too, because it's a really nice exfoliator on the skin, even though we could get by with shaving with any number of products that are probably already in our shower. Right. Um, but, and even with water, I mean, you know, we don't have to use a specific shaving cream or foam or anything, but the idea is if you treat your skin well, if you prep it well and you give it some nourishment, it's going to be a better result. You'll have a much happier aftershave. Right. Um, and so I, I get a lot of people who do shave with it, but they also say, man, I get on my elbows and stuff and exfoliate, you know, while I'm in there. So they're kind of using it in different parts of their body, but it's, it's good for all skin. Yeah. Um, so you've got laundry, you've got, you know, body, hair, um, dish soap, did you say? You yes, that? we have dish soap bars as well. Like they lather up really easily. I prefer using them with like a little scrub brush. Uh-huh. My husband's more of the dish cloth type. Right. But it works either way, you know, but it's just a bar of soap. Put it in the, you know, in the dish cloth, rub some on there like you would a, um, you know, a, cloth in your shower uh-huh. and wash the dishes with it. So you, and it's got a lot of sea salt in it. So it cuts the grease and grime real easy. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So you developed all this in your kitchen, I'm assuming. This... Um, I call it my garage lab. Garage lab. <laughs> <laughs> my husband set me up long ago when I was first tinkering around. He set me up a nice little space in the garage where I could tinker away and I could kind of grow in that space because before I knew it, I was buying different oils and different right. ingredients. And, um, you know, my laundry soap started using like borax and that kind of stuff. And then it evolved into um, using things like yucca root powder 
um, and soap nuts liquid. Oh, wow. You know, these are really natural things that have been around forever. And people have been um, using the natural detergents that are in those foods, really, and right. using them to clean their bodies and homes and fabrics and stuff with. Yeah. You know, there's so many, you know, simple changes that we could make that I think that people just, like you say, we just get so complacent, you know, go to Target, pick it up and, and go. So how do people get your products? Do you, obviously you ship. Well, let me, let me, let me just say something about what you just said, you know, simple changes that we can make. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people say to me, you know, what can I do to make a change? And there's always three tips I like to share okay, with people. Yeah, sure, and First of all, it's always choosing bar over a bottle. When you have the opportunity in a store and there's a bar ver of a bottle version of that, buy the bar. The second thing is try growing something at home. Yeah. You know, we usually buy tomatoes at the store. Mm -hmm. Take out one of those seeds, push it into a pot, push it into your yard. You know, take advantage of any space that you can have a little bit of dirt. Grow an herb, something that's really simple. Just yeah. grow something. Yep. And then the other thing is read our food labels. You know, food has a dramatic way of affecting not only how we feel on the inside, but a lot of that excess food packaging ends up being just plastic trash yeah. and it never decomposes. And I think a lot of times, like what's happened to me over the years is that I realized that I choose some products now because of the packaging, which means I might want something. But then I'm like, ooh, I don't want to buy that packaging anymore. I don't right. want to contribute to that waste. So usually it starts with the ingredients when we realize that maybe those ingredients aren't great or I can barely pronounce them. Yeah. So we choose to start moving that out, and then it usually can lead into some um, better packaging choices. Yeah, they always say if you can't pronounce an ingredient, you shouldn't be ingesting it. You know, we started, um, you know, you mentioned about planting the garden. You know, my, like I said, my brother always had a garden. I kill artificial plants. That's how bad I am. I can't grow anything. <laughs> so last year, um, our grandson, I'm like, all right, buddy, we're going to, we're going to plant a tomato plant and see how we do. And, um, it, it just, it, it didn't amount to much. Um, but the more people I talked to, they, everybody had problems. It seems like with tomatoes last year for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, so this year we got, um, a raised bed and yep. so we've been nurturing that and stuff and, and we've got some tomatoes planted and basil and cilantro and mm. lavender so far so that's Love what's it. Going, that's what's going in there so far but I, I did grow my own basil last year because i like to make the um um pesto oh I that's pesto so good or put it good. over the tomato so my whole thought was i grow my own basil i'll have my own tomatoes and just throw some mozzarella mm. cheese in there and it just oh it's so good so, yeah, so you, fresh and delicious. Yeah. So listen, when people aren't good at gardening, the best thing they can do is buy the seeds for their neighbor who <laughs> is good at gardening. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can share. Yeah, I am. Uh, like I said, that's always my thing. I, I kill artificial plants, but I'm going to give it a good world to share and, and see what well, we can Well, it sounds do. like you do it. You're off to a great start. You're growing a couple of herbs and a tomato and you, you know, you just... As long as I feel like one thing, it makes a difference. Yeah. Just one thing. Yeah. You got to start somewhere, right? So That's right. <laughs> but That's right. What would you, what kind of advice would you give to people who maybe are thinking, you know, they want to start a business, they've got an idea, but they're not sure where to go with it. What, what advice do you have to people? Oh man. The first thing that comes to my head is you've got to have a passion for it. There are going to be rough days. There are going to be bad days especially in the beginning, there's going to be no, you're going to spend more money than you make money. Oh yeah. Those days won't, you won't last if you don't have a passion for it. Yeah. And then the second best advice is to find people that you can delegate some things to. And if you can't afford them at the beginning, that's fine. We, you, we usually can't afford the crew that we really need at the yeah. very beginning because of the budget. But in the beginning, budget for those people because they're coming. Yeah. And it's harder to raise your prices later when you've been consistently selling at a certain price because now you've got to take on those extra expenses and they're coming as your business grows. They're going to come. Yeah. I think that's probably the hardest thing that I had to do was to start to delegate things. Um, you know, I like to just do it myself, you know, but then it got, as my business, you know, started yeah. to grow and grow and grow it got like, I just can't do this anymore. I was working a lot of hours. I was stressed. I was cranky. Yeah. And so I hired an assistant and I'll tell you, she has been an absolute godsend 
to me. I, she has awesome. relieved so much stress for me. I can give her an assignment and she does it. I can throw out an idea. She runs with it. And it has just made such a difference. And it's allowed me to grow even more because yeah. I can work on my business, not so much in my business. That's so, the big difference right there. You nailed it right on the head, Michelle. Yep, that's that's the big thing. And and I think it is hard because this is our baby, you know, it's our business, you know, that we've we've yeah. built and we've dreamed about and we've fallen, we've cried over, you know, and been sick over and but it's our baby. We don't want to let go of it, but there comes a time, just like yeah. with a child, you've got to release some. You've got to release some of that control. And it, it does it just makes such a big difference. So one thing I did learn recently, probably the, the the biggest thing that I've learned in the past couple of years was that bringing people on who don't understand what you're trying to do mm -hmm. is not good. Right. Because like for me, I don't want to work with people who don't understand why it's important to live this lifestyle of reducing our waste or choosing plastic free options. Yeah. You, you know, you don't want to be dragging people. You want people walking with you side by side. And so when they come in with that mentality right away, it's so much easier to have a positive, productive work experience with them. Oh, yeah, and that's absolutely. when I definitely changed my tune over the last couple of years. I'm not hiring and working with people that don't get it. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever read the book Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold? No, it, but I love reading. Yeah, um, the Vivid Vision by Cameron Harold. He Cameron was um, the CEO of One Eight Hundred Get Junk, and he took it from like um, maybe it was a million dollar company to a multi multi million dollar company, and he's done that with several companies. But this book, Vivid Vision, and it's available on print or audio. He really and who's the author again? What's his name? Cameron Harold. And okay. what he actually talks about is, you know, we all talk about having a vision board, you know, to yes, we cut out pictures and we put them up there, but he takes it so much farther where it is putting, you know, a, a five year, a three year, a five year in plan on what that's actually going to look like and how to get your team to be part of that, that, you know, to get their buy-in with your vision. Because once they have your vision, then that's how things grow. But that book, I've listened to it several times and put things into, into practice with it. And it's just, it's a great, great read. So I highly recommend that to any business owner is Vivid Vision. I think I'll check that out. I just was recommended a book called Traction that is a, is kind of that same way where a, a, you know, guy in business for a long time, he's developed a system. But right now, the first couple chapters is all about getting clear on what your beliefs are yeah. and then getting them into writing. And when you bring somebody on, you basically give them this speech and you say to them, this is who we are. This is what we believe. And if you won't be in alignment with that, you're not the right fit for us. Yep. And I think sometimes it's hard for us to say you're not the right fit. You know, and I've come with that over, especially this probably this last year with my business. You know, I do digital marketing. And at first it was like, yep, I can help everybody. Yep, I can do that. I can do that. And what I found was I wasn't able to scale that way because I was customizing stuff. You know, this customer had to have this oh, customized. Yeah. This was customized. This was customized. And so, you know, I had to kind of get away from that. And there are certain niches that I'm not the right fit. You know, there was a gentleman that called me um, a couple of weeks ago and he would have paid me great money, but I told him, I said, I'm sorry, I'm not the right fit for you, but let me, you know, let me get you someone who is, you know, so I was able to refer him to somebody and, you know, they, they started working together. But I think that's hard too, for us to say, you know, whether it's, you know, hiring somebody or going to work for somebody or as a customer, mm -hmm. you know, whether they're the right fit or not. And it makes such a difference. To be able to oh, and that, that only comes with experience because at the beginning we want the money. We need yeah. the money, right? So we just feel like we need to take all the jobs on. Yeah. But exactly. with experience, you realize that every customer is not your customer. Yep. And it takes it takes a lot to realize that. But you know, like going back, you know, delegating and being able to accept and, you know, say they're not the right customer. That makes yeah. such a difference in your yeah. business. So Angie, where can people find you? Well, in Eustis, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I 
all of everything that we do is online. Uh, we are in a bunch of stores throughout the United States. So Excellent. I encourage people to go to our website, which is wastefreeproducts.com. Okay, we'll put that down here in the video. Thank you. And we have a store directory link up there. So first check and see if it's available at a local store around you. I always encourage to buy local. We've got some amazing store owners. Some of them are, are refill shops or zero waste shops or health food stores. Nice. So I definitely encourage that route first. And then if not, you know, you can order from our website. We've got really affordable shipping. And because our products are really small and compact, yeah. Um, you know, we can ship anywhere between like one and sometimes depending on what you order, like five or six products for less than five bucks. Oh, that's amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. So, Angie, I'd like to end um, our interview with what is your favorite inspirational quote? Is there like your go to quote? You mean the one that's stuck to my computer right yeah, there? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> um, it, it's by David Allen and it says you can do anything, but you can't do everything. So true. And that comes back to what we were just talking about. You know, yeah. that is so yeah. true. I love that. So Angie, thank, thank you. you so much for taking time out of your schedule to chat with us and educate. You're welcome. Us. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate oh, that you're absolutely. showcasing, you know, businesses and especially those, you know, made right here in America. Yep. And you know, that's the big thing, you know, uh, my business, my, my digital marketing is my cup of media. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep going with that. And that's where my cup of America came in. And I'm just so excited to to talk to people. You know, today I've talked to um, Texas, Michigan, and you here in Florida. I've got one oh um, that's coming in from Oregon. I've interviewed Tennessee. So, you know, anybody out there who, you know, does Made in America stuff, please reach out. You know anybody, refer them to us because, definitely, you know, it's just, it's just helping spread the word about what they do. So that's right. That's right. We don't know who we can support until we know who they are. Exactly. It comes back to the, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. right. So, well, thank you, Michelle, for having right. me today. Have thank a beautiful so afternoon. Much, all right. Chat soon. Bye. Bye.